Hello and welcome to HCTV. Again, we're joined with um, Ian and, and Dave. Back to normality after the um, entry special last week. How's it going, lads? You okay? Very good, mate. How are you? Yeah, all good. Thank you. All good. All good. All yeah. um, all all recovered from uh, from entry. Yeah, still yeah. On, still still on the crest of a wave. To be honest, mate. What what a podcast that was. Oh, unbelievable! I was about to go on to that in a, in a second. To be honest with you, I mean, we, I, I'll just—I was going to do a big thing, but while, while you you brought us onto it, then I'm going to read you out exactly what the um, the weekend inside between yourself and Ronan actually picked from the the, uh, the the ones that were mentioned. So get on this for a, a full summary of exactly what was done. So Thursday, the two twenty, uh, Monreal won at. Uh, Five to four with the forecast. Um, one at three to one. The two fifty waiting patiently lost. The three twenty five abracadabras one at five to one. Brewing up a storm was fifth that that, that paid the places, which was eight to one. Friday, the two fifty Chantry House won at five to two. A spot uh, de Romane fell at the last when leading at nine to one. That, you know what, mate, that, that killed me. That you know. Uh, that, that on, was on looking Friday, good at all, wasn't it? Oh, mate, I was completely depressed all Friday night on that one. <laughs> um, the three twenty-five Fakir Duris won at uh, hundred to thirty. Nutswell uh, finished second at fourteen to one. The forecast was a huge twenty-six to one. Four forty Brave Man's Game was second at seven to four. On to Saturday, My Drogo won at seven to four. The three thirty-five time hill won at eleven to four. That double paid ten to one. Um, and then the five fifteen of the obviously the Grand National Burrow Saint each way placed at ten to one. Canelo fell. Um, Milan native pulled up. But I tell you what, I think I think did we look that if you'd put a, a tenner on each each one that we said you'd be about five hundred quid up. Yeah. yeah so a, a, a tenner unit stay. You know. So basically. If we advised it each way, that would be 20 quid, you know, 10 each way. So yeah. we worked out uh, it was well over 500 quid up on the ancient special. I've, I've got to say, Ian, you and Ronan, that was unbelievable. To, to we, be... we had a couple of celebratory beers there this Saturday, oh. didn't we, boys? Oh, we did. <laughs> we did, I tell you. I mean, Just... to, I mean, I'm not being funny. To predict that many winners over over the three days... I mean, you, you basically, I, I, I know your percentages, Chris, that's your game, but you can't do that. 99%, about, mate. Well, there you go. That's how good it was. <laughs> it was nearly as good as Chris's rugby percentage. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I tell you what, just just while we're on, Dave, are you getting recognised anywhere yet from this from this podcast or YouTube stuff? Um, I don't no, know where this not, is going. I don't know. Yet, no. I, I, I got recognised by you when I saw you on Friday. That's about okay. it. How about you, Chris? Any, well, well, any, you any recognition yet? Yeah. Uh, well, you, you're funny you should mention it, but uh, I'll, I'll let you set the line like me. Go on. Oh, it's just, obviously, we met up for a socially distant outdoor meeting earlier on today, and it was just nice, wasn't it? We were approached by a, 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 a guy, and he said, wow, it's, it's the guys from the podcast. Let me buy you a couple of beers. <laughs> It is true, oh, Dave. Actually it, true. Oh, it, it is that. actually true. Honestly, he come over and he went, "Oh, let me get the guys from the podcast um, a drink." And we were sat there, and he came over mate. and he put two beers down on the table, and he went, "You guys have won me a few quid over the last few weeks." Oh, that's brilliant! <laughs> that. How good have, is that? Have you you not met him before? I I, I know him like, but right. yeah, as soon as. <laughs> Chris had never met him before, so as soon as Chris came over, he went, oh, it's the podcast, guys. <laughs> Brilliant. Luckily, I had some uh, pictures of myself in my pocket, and I, I signed a couple for him, you know, keep keep the uh, keep the fans happy. I'll tell you what, Chris, the selfies were embarrassing, though, mate, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did get a bit much after, after a couple it, of hours. It got a bit much, didn't it? It had it, been a bit awkward if I was there, and he just brought the two pints over anyway, and I was just sat there on me <laughs> There you go, lads. That's, a, that's six quid, please. 
Um, oh. What about yourselves, as apart from um, obviously the podcast winners and stuff? Any any luck on the national? Uh, not, well, to be honest, I know, I know Dave weirdly picked like three of the first four, didn't you, Dave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> I managed... like to talk about it. I'm not talking about it. I'm, I'm not. It wound me up that. So, as you know, I was with you when I went to check it, and I had it. I actually shown you. I had it to place it, and I didn't actually place a bet on the winner, but I placed a bet on the third and the fourth each way. But so, not, well, that's what counts, mate. As long as you can get third and fourth, that's what counts. Wait there, so, wait there. Also, do, do, I, I hang on, wait there, very, Dave. I need to clarify this for people listening. So, what Dave actually did was he picked Manila Times. He selected his steak and then got distracted and didn't yeah. press play. You didn't press yeah. enter on the bet, did you? And I when he went to check, it was still there in his betting slip. Yeah. No, I've actually got one better than this. I, I can't believe I didn't tell you this on Friday. I was in the pub. Can you remember this, Chris? This is a couple of years ago. I was in the pub and I was banging on saying, Oh, Aubameyang's going to score. He's going to score first scorer. <laughs> yeah. And I went, right, and I put him I put him on. Anyway, they got a penalty, right? So he scores. I'm up going mental. I did the same thing. I put him in my bet slip and not press the, the bet button. Never press play. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> brilliant. No. Oh, brilliant. I, I, I've got a famous one about the 66-1 uh, to 1 winner as well. I tell you that I told everyone to jump aboard and uh, I changed yeah. my mind and it, and it, and it oh, came in. But, mate, uh, that was at eight off, wasn't it? Hey, Doc, yeah, Kato Star was absolutely, uh, it was unstoppable until it, until Ruby Walsh fell off it at the last fence, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, leave, you leave Ruby alone, I like Ruby. <laughs> um, carrying on from um, last week, you know, I like to take anything as a positive, but the Rugby League, um, so about me, me odds um, finishing, uh, the game finishing on an odds, so basically all you need is a, a drop goal, so round one, uh, three out of six games, which, as you know, is a 99% win rate. <laughs> <laughs> um, round two, there was also three out of six games. Um, and then then it was like the Challenge Cup kind of spoiled it with like mishmash of games. But one game came in and that was early on the, I think that was a Friday night. I think that was. So if you'd have backed it, you'd have been, you'd have been up. Uh, what was so that this just was about 80%, 80 something like that? Yeah, that's it, mate. It knocked it down to about eighty percent. Yeah. Have so you, this week, have you been back to a lot of these, Chris? These uh, on the first two rounds, yeah. The first two rounds, oh, yeah. So I, I back every every game. So there's only six games. Um, yeah. so, so three out of six in. It's um, it, it's it's pretty good playing nine to two, four to one. So it's good. Yeah. So this weekend we're on uh, round three, and I'll, I'll be backing them all again. Remember, it's only uh, bet three six five that offer. This yeah. bet as well, so it's it's good. It starts off with Leeds and um, Wigan on Friday is a Sky game, and there's another Sky game on Friday. But uh, it's definitely definitely worth looking at. Um, I'll tell you what, Chris, well, like, give, give them a, a, a sort of a bit of a betting podcast. I think we've got to take our heads off to, to bet three six five. What, what a sight they are! Look at the, the offer they did for the Grand National there, where they were refunding yeah. half your stake, half your money, yeah, on, on the Grand National bet up to one hundred and twenty five quid. And they've done that mm -hmm. for the last few years as well. They're a, they're a bit of an underrated bookie, them, you know. I recommend anyone yeah. to go with them. Well, have, have you had a secret agreement with these, Ian? <laughs> like in the week or something? You I, really hate, I, 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 hate, I hate Skybet. Oh, he doesn't yeah. like Skybet. <laughs> yeah, but you were singing the praises when it paid you the money for like, the extra place on the seven places, Oh, weren't you? you was. You I was. was, yeah. The one that sneaked in <laughs> in the Irish Grand National. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were singing the praises there. The only time I've ever liked them. <laughs> um, also, as well, last week was the the Masters in the golf. Uh, I know we had a little chat about them, and I, and I know we said we don't know a great deal about golf, but I think we mentioned um, Jordan Spieth was a good price. Yeah, and we did, the yeah. Tournament. Um, now, he finished tied at third place, and I think he was about about 14 to 1-ish or something like that. If, place. If you re Chris, if you remember... We said, what a better nothing that was. So yeah. you brought yeah. him up at the odds, and we said, he always comes in the top 10. Yeah. yeah no matter exactly. what, no, they, they were what? always playing top 10. And what are the each yeah. way, um, what are the each way odds with the goal? I think it's a quarter or a fifth. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so yeah. it's good. So, so he was about 14 to 1, he was. Right. There was a story you seen about one of the, the guys who was leading completely lost the plot and broke his club. Did you hear about this? Oh, no, I didn't see it. Apparently, he was about three or four shots clear and he smashed his putter. You know, you know, like when you're playing golf and quite often you lose your head. Yeah, he smashed his putter. Morning, I know about that. And he had to he had to play the rest of the round putting with his forward. <laughs> really? Yeah, honest to God. And I, I, I should have done a bit of research before to find out what his name was. But he, he proper like mangled his club in anger and had to <laughs> put with his forward for the rest of the round. Your, your John's good at that, isn't he, Dave? Your oh, Johnny was yeah. the uh, the guest the other week. He, he's good at losing his head at golf. Oh, I believe so. <laughs> He can throw so. a good club. Um, yeah, so so that was that was last week. Uh really, lads. Um we're recording this on uh Wednesday night, just just ahead of the Liverpool Real and the Man City Brushy Dortmund. What's your what's your thoughts on tonight's lads? Uh I, I I am confident of a Liverpool win. I I did think we'd win last week. I said if we can't beat Real Madrid over two legs and we don't deserve to win anything in this competition and I, and I still sit by that because it's the worst Real Madrid side in a long time um, I just thought they played really well last week they outplayed us um, the old guys in midfield especially Tony Cruz he, he ran the game I'm hoping that um, that took take, took it out of them against uh, Barcelona over the weekend they, they won though they beat Barca didn't they they did they did um, but I'm hoping it, you know, they've played a quite a few big, big games recently. I'm hoping they don't play as well as last week. And um, I think we'll win. Whether it's going to be enough to go through, I don't know. But I've backed Mane to score any time for whenever you, obviously, when people watch this, they'll, they'll be able to know if the bet's coming or not. Mane any time, Liverpool to win and Casemiro to be booked and two goals or more in the game at eight to one. I actually think that's a good bet. I uh, I think you're underplaying Real a little bit. I think uh, I was quite impressed with them in the first leg, to be honest, yeah. mate. I haven't seen enough of them this season to, to warrant a proper assessment of them. But I think I don't think they got the credit they deserve from that first. Like some of their goals were fantastic, especially yeah. the one you know where he went through and he dinked it over the keeper. Yeah, it was good. I, I thought I thought that was a great goal. Uh, I think the one thing that Liverpool are going to struggle with tonight. Normally, for the second leg, they go back to a, a bounce in Anfield. Mm-hmm. And without doubt, mate, being an Evertonian, it kills me to say this, Liverpool yeah. on the European night is, is second yeah. to none. And yeah. I think if the crowds were there tonight, I'd back used to go through. I think mm-hmm. looking at Liverpool at home this season, if Real come and do a proper professional job on you, I think you'll struggle. Yeah, uh, I completely just, just because of the crowd situation, mate. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I won't disagree with that, and I think we did underestimate underestimate them last week. Um, but as I said, we're way better away from home as well this season. Well, the last couple of months, so we'll see. Anyway, I'm looking forward to it. I think it will be um, an entertaining game. Anyway, the other the I other game a bit of a the other game's a bit of a mad one. Uh, I was looking today. Dortmund have got a few people out, and City. Yeah. I was surprised to see the odds on. Uh, well, away well, at Dortmund. I've just backed, I've, I've just backed uh, Dortmund one nil, and I, and I thought it was an unbelievable price. Twenty to one, Dortmund one nil. What? Yeah. I've, I've just, I mean, just, just, I, I suppose what what you what what you've got there, though, Chris, is the problem of stopping City scoring. Yeah, which is, yeah, which is always difficult. Uh, yeah, of course. But I thought for for twenty to one, I can't. I can't not back that at that price, and I've done no. um, uh, Harland seven to two for a scorer as well. I tell you what, mate, have you not doubled them up? No, no, I was let down the other day with Lacazette two 0 at fifteen. Oh, come on, if you're doing two singles there, surely you've got to throw the double on. I know, no, I've not, I've not got deep pockets as you, Ian. Yeah, only thinking a quid, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm literally going to do that to wind you up as we speak now, live on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I'm going to get on it as well in a second. Oh, with Skybet. Um, <laughs> with Skybet, <laughs> yeah. Oh, on, by on the way, the... Uh, Ian, tonight, bet 365. Oh, bet this is what I was just about to say, Dave. Go on. 
you bet a tenner and you get a pre-game and you'll get a £10 in-play in bet for free. Okay, bet 365 it is. Yeah. Uh, so. Brilliant. Okay, so so that's that's tonight, lads. Um, I, I, I now I know you do like your, um, your 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 weird sports and things that I like to talk about. Now they say that um, blokes aren't very multi talented or can't multitask, should I say? Now I, I was having a little look at this today. It, it's something called chess boxing. Now have you have, have you boys any seen this chess boxing? Chess. Yeah, chess. Yeah. What are you I'll, doing take, I'll take the is, silence as a no then. Is, is, is this playing chess with boxing gloves on? Well, <laughs> it would be pretty difficult, that, but it's it's pretty similar. So, <laughs> they, 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 are, they have five rounds each. So, what they do is, so it's felt, uh, I've not seen a women's one, so I'm saying it's fellas. They have five rounds of each. So, there's five games of chess and five rounds of boxing. So, they have a round of boxing and they score them like on points as a normal boxing match. And then they sit down and have a game of chess against each other on like speed chess, and you can beat your opponent either by but getting like them into chess. sweat and blood pouring from the faces <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, exactly. So they sit down in the middle of the ring, like set the boxing gloves off, sit down for a game of chess on like speed chess, and you can beat your opponent either you can knock them out in boxing or in points at the end, or you can get them into checkmate, or the the loser kind of puts his hand up and says that that's me done. It's not when we met, be, not when we met before. Not when we met before, and you said, "Don't worry, I've done me prep for the show tonight." <laughs> yeah. Was this part of it, or have you this just made it. this up now? No, this yeah, is yeah, it. No, no, this is it. So I spent all afternoon watching chess boxing. Honestly, it's madness. So they're there, like knocking lumps out of each other in in the ring, and then they take the gloves off and they sit down <laughs> for a nice game of chess, and then they're up again, <laughs> battering each other again, and it's played in like. Well, it's a sport in like England, Japan, Korea, Germany. So, so, like, so are the people who play it, they all like geeks, are they all like Mr. Bean yeah, type it's players. Just loads, of, loads of Harry Potters sat around. <laughs> so, so you've got to have a chess ability of over a hundred or something. But you've obviously you've got to, you've made you've just made that up. There isn't a the scale. There isn't the scale <laughs> of it, chess it, ability. It really is. I'll tell you what this is. I'll tell you what this is. This is when Partridge was trying to get a second series and he made up some sport and you could do it cheap and I could uh -huh. that. Yes, I was talking to me dictaphone tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Idea for new sport. Chris, yes, did, they all, did they all have leather pants on? <laughs> Would you Both like me to play over. chess with you? <laughs> We, we've just all let out our inner partridge geek there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty much. Um, okay, so uh, on to this week, fellas. I know you're not really taking me on again with chess boxing, so we'll nah. qu quickly move on to this week. Um, football, David, are you um, are you going to get us a winner this week, mate? Yeah, I, on, I hope so, mate. It's a, it's a, it's about. Do you know what? It's been and it's it's not no good for me. Two weeks with no no winner, so. You know, well, I've, crossed, I've had winners, yeah. but you know, obviously, me accumulative bet hasn't come in, so let's hope we'd get one this week, mate. You don't know pressure me. until you have winners every week. That's pressure. <laughs> yeah. that, I'd tell you what, you, you wait till you go on a little bit of a run, Ian. Tell you a little bit of a dodgy spell, I'll be all over you. Do you know what, mate? <laughs> After AC Nights, I've been dreading doing this this week. Yeah. Because the, like I'm just thinking, if I don't get a winner this week, do you know what? But come on, Dave, get us through it, man. I just right. I want you to I want you to get us through the podcast this week. Right, yeah, right. go on, Dave, me... take, take it away, mate. Right. right, all right. What I'm going for is a sixfold over two days over a Friday and Saturday. The reason being, it's all early kickoffs on um, Saturday anyway because of uh, the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral. Um, out of respect, they're all having. R12 kickoff. So I thought we normally don't go, we don't like going early kickoff. So I'm, what I'm going to do is because we have to do early kickoffs, we're also going on a Friday night. I've got two strong, very strong picks for Friday. So I'm hoping, well, we should be going into Saturday with two ticks out of the six. 
The first one, and I know Ian's not going to like it because he doesn't Tottenham. like betting. Tottenham, yeah, whatever. He doesn't like betting on his own team. No, no, both teams to score. Uh, the the reason both teams to score in this is I'm, I'm looking at the last game at Goodison in the FA Cup in February between the two teams, and it was four all in ninety minutes. Everton won five four in extra time. But it was four all and it could have been any score. It could have been ten. It was just like ridiculous the amount of It was like kids it was like kids footy. Yeah. It was the both inconsistent still, I think. Both sides. Everton aren't as strong at home. They do concede at home. Spurs score and concede away. I, I can just see goals all over that game. So that's the first pick of a goals galore. I don't know ever what, what do you think about that one, Ian? Uh, well, you, you know I don't like betting on Everton. He... Oh, Ian's gone. He's gone. Oh, he's, he's back. Hey there, Ian. <laughs> Turned his mic off. <laughs> You're on mute. You're on <laughs> mute. Oh, <he's... laughs> there we go. You're back. <laughs> you mentioned betting on Everton and it all goes to tits up. Uh, <laughs> mate, to... Did you see our match Monday? It was one of the most boring matches I have ever seen. Yeah, uh, but do you know what? I'm no, no. I mean, I'm not the biggest Everton fan, but I'm not being funny. Um, Brighton are one of the most boring teams I've ever witnessed play football. They just keep the ball and do nothing with it. They go back. Yeah, for no reason. They keep it for no yeah. reason. Yeah. Uh, so after Monday's match, mate, I wouldn't throw anything on Everton. However, right. I do think we, I do think we'll score. Because we yeah. need to, we need to make a statement after how crap we were on Monday, and uh, okay. I don't think I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet. So I think you're probably safe. I don't know what the results will be, but I think you're safe. Okay, mate, that'll do me. Um, so that's the goals galore, and now I've got a win on a on a Friday as well, and this is as strong as it'll get from me. And it's Peterborough to beat Northampton. If Peterborough win. They go level on points with Hull at the top. Um, they're amazing at home. The game before last, they beat Accrington 7-0 uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, Northampton are fighting relegation, but they're basically not finding any form whatsoever. Like the other teams, like Wigan beat Sunderland uh, yesterday um, and Wimbledon uh, won 3-0 last night. So teams around them have got form, but Northampton haven't. Um, and they've lost nine of the last 13 away, drawing the other four. So the away form's poor. Peterborough flying. They're at home. They, to, to win to go top, that, that, it's as strong as you're going to get case for, for a win. So we've got Peterborough to win, Everton and Spurs, goals galore on Friday. Going into Saturday... Um, I've just got three wins that are, again, strong fancied and a goal so galore. Got, sorry to interrupt, Dave. What would yeah. you do with them Friday ones? Would you just do them as a double or would you be throwing no, them? No, no, no. What I'm saying is, mate, is, is go on. Um, I'll say, I was going to say at the end, but I'm I'm saying as a six-fold. I'm going right, to back okay. it. Because, it I, because I really fancy the, the teams to win one. Uh, oh, the bag here, Dave, innit? Well, yeah, Chris. Would, um, Chris, how about how about? Uh, sorry, Dave. How about uh, well, doing six and five? You know, just to. Well, I was going to say do the um, do the six, but but then do the separate four teams to win, which I'll explain at yeah, the end yeah. because. Okay. You know, I mean, goals galore. I mean, I know I, I I bring these facts and figures, and you know, you get a feeling, but sometimes you can watch a game like I watched. Um, Last night, I watched um, Paris Saint-Germain and Bayern Munich. And I expected loads of goals like the week before. And they should have been. And, and I don't know how they wasn't, but it ended 1-0. So, although... But well, don't can... forget, Christophe, second legs, second legs are often quite different. They're not your standard games, are they? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially when someone's got a good lead to defend. Did you watch the game, though? Yeah, I didn't actually, no. Oh, Should it have been I'm, about six all? I mean, our Neymar didn't score. He hit the post uh, twice, the bar ones, and he did a poor Gascoigne moment. You know, in your 96 where he the slides. Slide. And he oh, slides across, yeah. 
So I don't know how these goals. So it should have been loads of goals, both teams, but it, but it wasn't. So that's what I'm saying about goals galore. You know, you, you try your best, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. It so doesn't fall, does it? it doesn't yeah. fall. So uh, that's why this week I've only picked two. So the Everton and the Spurs. Now, my one for Saturday is Newcastle and West Ham. And I actually spoke to a Newcastle fan today to get his opinion on this. And he was very supportive, saying, yeah, I do think we will definitely score and we'll concede. Um, Newcastle at home have been both teams to score in the last seven home games. That's what what um, I, what caught my attention. Also, uh, they won the last game away at Burnley at the weekend, 2-1. Two, uh, two, it was nil-nil until Callum Wilson and St Maximum came on. And the, and St Maximum was unbelievable. He set one up, he scored one. I, I think he's got to go to a big club, by the way. He's some player. He's, a mad, he's a mad player, him. He's, I, I really like him. He, I think I just think yeah. he's class. So he proper explodes, got, doesn't he? he yeah, he's, just he's a so very, powerful. Like, explosive player. Yeah, yeah. He, he reminds me of Mane um, um, because he's powerful. He never gives up. But the Newcastle fan said, no, he's nothing like Mane. <laughs> He said he's not. He's not as strong as Mane. He said he's a typical French player that if he gets knocked about a few times, because he watches him, remember all the time. Yeah, yeah. He, he, gets knocked, he, says he, he doesn't want to know. So he doesn't right. fancy it. Yeah, so he might need a manager that will turn him round. You know, but uh, I rate David Ginola. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, but I rate him, and I do fancy them to score. Um, West Ham, as we know, are in fantastic form. Um, the last three games West Ham have been involved in it have, have had 16 goals in them. So when you look at that, Come on, Chris. And you look, get it up, get yeah, it up. On. So, <laughs> so them, to, them stats alone um, just say that that's goals galore. So there's your two. Now I'll just go through quickly my three wins on on Saturday, and again the strong fancies. I'm going for Watford away at Luton. Watford a second and they're going for automatic uh, promotion. They're, scoring, uh, they're still scoring loads of goals and they're good away from home. They've only lost um, away at Bournemouth one, and that was 1-0 and it was a very close game um, and that was at the, out of the last nine away. Um, Watford a mid-table... Uh, well, sorry, where am I now? Sorry. Luton a mid table, should I say? They've got they've got no chance of playoffs. They're not going to get relegated. Um, I know you can say either way there, thinking oh they're relaxed, but with Watford going for automatic promotion, yeah, I can just see them going there and and winning three, maybe four now. Quite comfortably, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like your thinking, yeah. Um, next one, Swansea to beat Wickham. Now Swansea, right? <laughs> this is funny. This. They were absolutely flying all season. And then about a month back, they lost four in a row, not scoring. And all season, they've been built on not conceding goals. And if you remember, I put them in a, I put them on the podcast when they were in flying form to win away at Huddersfield. And it was part of a treble that let me down. They got battered 4-1 at Huddersfield. Yeah, they did. That, that was the yeah. first one they'd lost in ages, wasn't it? <laughs> exactly. And you know what? That was the start of a four-game losing streak. And they were conceding loads of goals. I was thinking, God, they were, they were so good. But they seem to have sorted that out. They've won back-to-back -back games um, to nil. They've won two nil and three nil away. So I think Swansea are back. Um, and as I say, they, they're looking, they, they're still in third, so they're still looking to go up. They're... Um, what what was my stat on it? Uh, Wickham, um, a bottom, and they got beat by Luton three one last time out. So there, it, then again, they are the they bottom of the league, and they still they have got a fighting chance. But I do think Swansea are too strong for them, and they do they do want obviously they want to try and get this automatic promotion place. It's it's getting to that stage of the season, isn't it, where you you kind yeah. of start. <clears throat> second guessing yourself really with you think that like things are nailed on the teams flying in form and then you got teams who are fighting for their lives prime example Wigan night against yeah. Sunderland you know what I mean and they played very very well watch Wigan yesterday 
and they played very, very well and deserved the win. And it's like you'd, you'd never, unless you've like me followed Wigan, you'd never pick that result out ever, would you? No, never. L- lads, it, look, 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 look at what West Brom are doing now under Big Sam again. Really They're starting it. to string together. You wouldn't put it past them if they stayed up now, would you? You wouldn't. Just a string of wins together. And that's why I'm thinking, you know, business end, that's why I'm saying, you know, these teams that have not got nothing to play for and the ones yeah, that have, thinking. that's why I'm thinking, you know, this is the time. Uh, sorry, I, I got a bit caught on my heels then with, the, um, with that. Swansea are seven points of automatic promotion. That's what I was trying to say. Now, I, I think this is a game where they're saying, we've got to beat Wickham at home to stand any chance of making this automatic promotion. So there's another reason to back them. Yeah. Finally, Burton at home to Plymouth. Um, to be honest, both sides here don't have much to play for. But Bournemouth, uh, sorry, Burton have hit form massively the last three games. They were flying Being, last night, weren't they? They were. They won three 0 last night at Doncaster. Although Doncaster have been in great form, um, but they also beat Portsmouth the week before. Plymouth lost the last two games, both three 0 and they've got nothing to play for. I, I just think Burton will, will be good enough to, to turn Plymouth over. So, yeah. so the six-fold, so if you want to go with the four wins and the two goals galores over the two days, you've got to get 30 to 1. If you, nice. if, you, if you just want to go with it, and I think this strong fancies the four wins, you get 9 to 1 on that. Right, go ahead, list those four wins again, mate. Yeah, uh, Watford, Swansea, Burton and Peterborough on Friday night. Nine, Th- nine that, to one that's on a them very four, good, yeah. Yeah, mate, that's a bet, that. that that's a yeah. good nine to one bet, that. It takes the risk factor out of the goals galore as well. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I'm I, I'm going to bat the six fold, and I'm going to bat the four, the just the four teams to win. So, yeah, I like that. That's that's me for this week, Chris. So, yeah, I'm hoping for a, a win with them. Yeah, nice one, mate. Good, good, uh, good thinking behind behind them all. And I think you're right with the the teams with like them the mid sections of the leagues. There's and it makes it easier for these teams with no fans in there. I know we keep going on about the fans. But normally, you, you both go to football. You go there, and there's nothing worse than when your team doesn't travel. They get a little bit of an easy pass, don't they? These these yeah. teams, there's no nobody there. If they have a bit of an off day, there's no one hurling abuse at them and things like that. So mid table, looking forward to a nice summer holiday if they can get one and things like that. So I think I think you're right, mate. It's great thinking that is. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, mm-hmm. Dave. Um. Ian, on to you, mate, for the uh, for the horse racing. You've got a, a lot to follow up with the uh, with, with, from from last week with the the Aintree one with yourself and Ronan. So uh, I know I know Ronan uh, listens to this quite a bit. So he'll be uh, he'll be having a look at your selections, playing him against what what he's uh, he thinks well, we as well. Bi- so all, all to you. We, we, we had a nice big double the week before as well, didn't he? We? The uh, eight to one double on the Saturday the week before. That's where yeah. we've had a few good weeks. To be fair. Yeah, uh, that's why I've been bigging up this nine to one fuzzy bet from Dave to try and take the uh, take the attention away from me this week. Uh, so we're moving we're moving towards the end of the jump season and into the flat, and it's a, a very awkward period for having a bet on the horses because you're looking at horses that are at the end of the season from a national hunt point of view. And horses that are just finding the feet in the first time out from a flat point of view. So I wasn't confident enough to have a look at the flat meeting at Newbury just yet. I want to let that find its feet a little bit. So there's a jumps meeting at Air in Scotland on Sunday. It's moved to Scotland, uh, moved to Sunday for uh, Prince Philip's uh, funeral on Saturday. So the best meetings have moved to, to Sunday. So we're going to look at just, three just, races. Just before, you get in, just before you get stuck into them. Just, just to remind people that we are recording this on Wednesday evening. So for you to pick anything out um, of a fancy um, over the weekend, even on a Sunday, it's um, it, it's a pretty good going. You know what I mean? It's yeah, it's, it's nothing short of a minor miracle, given the the race cards haven't been finalised yet either. But I'm, I'm off to Aussie tomorrow. Bad, for a... You're doing well. It is. 
I'm hoping Jesus is there tomorrow. I'm off for an op on my shoulder, aren't I, tomorrow? So uh, oh, I'll be laid up. I'll be... Oh, I've not I feel, mentioned I feel, it. I feel like I'm having the operation. I've I heard about I it. I might have mentioned it. Might have mentioned it once. It's like, don't mention the war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, let's get to the racing. Uh, Sunday, yeah. uh, two twenty-five. I heard the Scottish champion hurdle. It's different to ours. It's a handicap. Uh, obviously, most of the championship races at Cheltenham or whatever uh, 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 group races, listed races, where everyone carries the same weight. Uh, this is a handicap. Uh, we are going straight in on a horse called Milkwood. At eleven to four, it came third at Cheltenham to a horse called Belfast Banter. Uh, it was carrying eleven pound more than the horse that day. It was only beating a couple of lengths. Belfast Banter has now gone on to win a Grade One novice race at Entry last week. Completely franked the form. It was beating horses rated one hundred and forty, one hundred and forty-two last week. Which in essence makes Milkwood a very, very well handicapped horse going into this. It was it was there to win the race at Cheltenham, and I think failed to to just stay up the hill. This is a fair long shorter on a flatter track. I think everything in its favour. It run a great race uh, at Newbury the time before in the Betfair hurdle. Quite confident on this one. Uh, it's eleven to four, which is nearly three to one. Uh, I'm going to recommend a win bet on that one. So that's the 225 at air. I'm it's also going to rec- uh, I think it's joint favourite oh. with uh, with one of the skeleton horses. Ooh, and, oh, you're going against your skeletons. Uh, the skeletons have got a horse called Calico in this. The reason I'm going against Calico is because it's very lightly raced. It's only ever run three times. And I don't think... The lack of experience is going to stand it in good stead against these horses. The irony is, I'm going to recommend putting this in a double as well in the three o'clock with one of the skeleton horses. Get in with one again. <laughs> uh, so, Milkwood, 225. Uh, you know what I keep wanting to do double. in there? And I, and I, I've refrained from doing it. I thought, I'll let, I'll let him crack on. But every time you just, tell, just, you said milk wood, I want to say what you got milk wood, <laughs> milk wood, what? what? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Sorry, it was just I, I just keep giggling to myself, sat here thinking I need to get it in. But anyway, go on, not, crack on. It's not like you, Chris. It's like when we met that fella before who, who bought us a pint. He said, "Ian, give us a tip." Chris, tell us a joke. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we've got milk wood there, uh, eleven to four and two twenty-five. That's a single. I also recommend putting in the double with this. Three o'clock at air, all mankind. So that is oh. one of the skeleton. It is one of the skeletons. Yeah. Uh, we, have we not won on a, him before? We have, mate, yeah. It's yeah, I officially that. I to say that, yeah. It's officially rated ten pound better than all of the horses in this. Because there's a bit of weight differentiation, if you look at the adjusted figures. The second favourite in this, Dame de Campagne, it comes out £2 better than that as well. And I can't be having that horse, to be honest. It's had an awful couple of runs. It's it's a mare back against the boys in this. That's why it gets so much weight from All Mankind. I think All Mankind's just a far better horse. There's one slight niggle in that. It normally runs over two miles. This is two mile four. I won't lie to you. I think Skelton... I'd love it if I'm correct on this one. I think Skelton's going to go to the front and these lot aren't going to see which way he's gone. I think he's going to realise, listen, I'm on the best horse here, not, let's not mess around. And air is a great track for front running. And with that in mind, it's six to four. It's worth a bet in its own right. If you stick it in the double with Milkwoods, I think that pays about eight to one. Oh, yes. And Lovely. I, I genuinely think that this all man can one is just going to go to the front and say, catch me if you can. Uh, and if you're already sitting on Milkwood and he goes to the front on that, you're going to get a hell of a run for your money. Skelton's going for the Jockey Championship. He's clear now. Uh, he's had a few wins today. This is Wednesday. He's just going to try and keep banging the winners in. And this is another one from for his brother. 
So that's the double. Given we've looked at the Irish, the Welsh and the English Grand National, it's the Scottish Grand National this week as well. So that's on Sunday in the 3.35. So we've got three races straight after each other. Uh, we are going for a horse called Mighty Thunder in this. It is 12 to 1 for a uh, trainer, Lucinda Russell. The trainer's going through an absolutely belt and patch at the moment. Uh, seven of the last 16 runners have either won or placed, which obviously is a great, re uh, great return. It came second in the Midlands Grand National. The Midlands Grand National is over two furlongs further then it's got to run. And it, it got caught in the last 100 yards. It was literally, it, it jumped the last three or four fences in the lead. It had won everywhere. And then it got caught last 100 yards in its last race. Two furlongs shorter. I, I When I've when I done my research for this, I, I couldn't work out why it wasn't favourite. Uh, it's up £5 for its last run, which is fair enough. But it's it's so massively improving. It's got so much in its favour. At twelve to one, this is the ultimate bet to nothing. You're going to get four, five, six places. Uh, yeah. If if this comes out of the top six, I'll stop doing the podcast. Uh, right. I, I just well, that, that, well, that deserves a, a a balls out the bag. <laughs> <laughs> balls out the bag just, on this one, Len. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so do, do you know what boys I've got loads to lose this week given the run of form we've been on but the more I look at Milkwood and All Mankind I think that's a solid double and um, Mighty Thunder each way 3.35 a very solid bet I wouldn't put anyone um, off any of them I'm going to get in early doors on that Mighty Thunder because I could from what you're saying I could see that getting backed in yeah, so I think Mighty Thunder will get backed in. I can't see that going off 12 to 1. I can see that going off more 8 to 1. Yeah. Uh, I think Milkwood will hold its price because uh, Coleco, the skeletons, won. Uh, I think All Mankind will probably get backed. Brilliant, mate. And, love and there, that. there we are. I love, I, love, yeah. I, love, I love the sound of that one on Sunday. Yeah. Um, really look forward to that. Um, brilliant fellas um, a good a good weekend of sport coming up uh, hopefully get some more winners and, and the form continues uh, anybody listening or watching to this please pass it on to your family your friends because you the, the stats kind of speak for themselves really don't they of what of what uh, each person's predicted and, and done every single week I think we're on episode 10 now and every week and there's been a couple of specials in there as well we're not just coming up with your usual even money favourites are winning and stuff. There's some absolute unbelievable value that's that's being predicted and tipped uh, from the football, the horse racing. Um, it, it's on there, so people really do need to start listening and, and, and sharing it with, with the family and friends and things. So, lads, I'm cautious of time. It's now 10 to 8 on Wednesday night. The football's about to start. I need to get that double on so Ian can't laugh at me next week when he comes in. Um, Ian... I know you don't like to talk about it, but good luck with your shoulder. Is it because you've been carrying me here in the last two weeks? <laughs> Do you know what? You just stole that line from me. Add that down here for the end. <laughs> Brilliant, lads. Good stuff. Great, uh, great insight. Hopefully get some more winners. Um, same time next week. Have a fantastic weekend. Good luck for your op, Ian, and we shall speak to you all soon. Cheers, fellas. Cheers, boys. Cheers.